Welcome to season one of the PMO Community Podcast Series. I am Aina Alive, your guide on this engaging exploration into the world of PMO leadership, highlighted by our unique book writing challenge. This season promises a series of enriching interviews with our distinguished book co-authors. Today, I am thrilled to converse with Luis Gardado, a highly engaged professional with 14 years of proven experience in leading project management offices across the globe for multinationals like HSBC, Jealous, United Nations, OneLink, and WebHelp. Luis has been recognized extensively for his outstanding contributions to the field, including accolades such as Best PMO of the Americas by PMO GA and Top 5 Revolutionary Business Leaders by CIO Time Magazine. Currently serving as Vice President of PMO Latam and Global Governance and Concentrics, Luis supports the corporate strategy design and ensures the flawless execution of the regional strategic portfolio and digital transformation endeavors. His leadership style is deeply influenced by stoic principles, which he seamlessly integrates with modern management practices to enhance team resilience and effectiveness. Today, we will dive into several thought-provoking topics and challenges, such as Stoic leadership, exploring how stoicism shapes Luis's role as a CPO and his approach to navigating the complexities of project management. Emotional intelligence, how Luis integrates emotional intelligence within a stoic leadership framework to enhance team performance and project outcomes. Stoicism in modern project management, the role of stoic principles in guiding decision-making and crisis management in today's fast-paced project environments. Resilience team culture, strategies employed by Luis to foster resilience and adaptability within the project teams using stoic philosophies. The future of leadership, Luis's vision for the evolution of stoic leadership in project management, especially considering the dynamic or remote and hybrid work. Stay tuned as Luis shares his profound insights and experiences, offering valuable lessons on the integration of stoicism and modern leadership practices. Don't miss out our upcoming episodes. Follow us on social media such as YouTube, LinkedIn, Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts to stay updated. Hello, Lucio. Nice to see you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. It's Friday. It's good to see you always. Likewise. Well, thank you for joining me for this uh, podcast. And uh, Luci is one of the uh, podcast and book uh, contributors on the topic, the evolution of uh, PMO, uh, Project uh, Portfolio Management Office, and to the rise of a CPO, Chief uh, uh, Project Officer, to C-suite table. And Luci, you wrote a chapter mainly related to uh, emotional intelligence and uh, collaboration. And also you mentioned uh, stoicism uh, principle in your chapter. So let's start talking about stoicism. What is it and uh, why you decided uh, to write your chapter related to this topic? Awesome, awesome. Thank you. I, I will start from the very beginning. Uh, when I was a kid, I was a very curious kid. I always ask a lot of questions. Uh, it, I think it's part of the, the human nature. Uh, but I, I also was raised within an environment of a lot of religious um, instructions, guidance, um, and all that came from traditional Christian mm-hmm. religious practices. Uh, but that doesn't that didn't stop me to well be curious sometimes the religious can be restricted in some way i'm not attacking it but um in in that ages i think it's natural to have questions um a couple of years later i decided to start learning about uh the jesuits i don't know if i pronounce it well it's uh it's it's one of the lines i would say of catholicism they mix 80 percent rationalism in 20 percent religion so for me it's very cool so i started to uh, have some interactions with this uh, with this line of 
uh, thoughts. And suddenly I uh, discover the Stoic philosophy. Now I am at my 40s. I'm, I'm really old, but uh, now uh, a couple of years later, I decided to start well, learning by appreciation. But three years ago, I started my PhD in philosophy. So it was a responsible way to approach this uh, intention to be more curious. I discovered Stoicism. It's a line of thought uh, from the ancient Greece. And it has different appreciations on how to manage your daily basis interaction. Um, at parallel, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a people person. And I studied different perspectives like neurosemantic, neuroscience, uh, neurolinguistic programming. I'm a frustrated psychologist, uh, but in some part of my uh, or my of my twenties and thirties, I decided also to study study responsibly uh, neurosemantics and some other specifics. What I have realized is the combination of this ancient line of thought of stoicism the mixture of the religions on how to behave on a moral and ethic way and the combination of science and they uh have a common aspect of always pursue their well-being and i'm a humanist i do love people and um for me, one of the main forces that sustain human interaction is the human well-being. And what does it mean? Human well-being can be complicated, or you can just ask to somebody, hey, what does make you smile? What does make you happy on a daily basis? And you will be amazed by the amount of information that you will be receiving because the person or, or the people will say, hey, my daily gasoline is my family, my son, my job, my hobbies, uh, service, I don't know. But this is starting point on how to start discovering how does it look, the well-being, from an introspective perspective, it's, it's the key. So Stoic philosophy proposed this way of uh, something that start with the, it's, it's a term, the dichotomy of control having a clear difference on what is under your control and what is not. Because there is a quote from Seneca that says, hey, the people that suffers early suffers twice. Because if, if, if you use the, economy, the, the dichotomy of control, you can understand, hey, should I suffer uh, about this? Because it's not in my control. So why do I suffering? Where, where where is the source or the root from of, of this pain or this anxious and if you start asking yourself questions you can achieve a certain level of clarity on how behave on a daily basis and don't be that hard with you and with others if you mix a stoic philosophy with empathy with the constant search of well-being and even though if it's from science or religion, you will understand that the true power of people is the power of collectively create and think. So that's what I enjoy the most of, of Stoic philosophy. So for that reason, I decided to, well, uh, draft a couple of ideas, start uh, writing the, the, the chapter uh, based on well-being and Stoic philosophy because I correlate both science well-being in stoic philosophy i really enjoyed your answer Lucia, and my favorite Thank part you. was about uh, suffering twice uh, from seneca quote it's uh, like what i normally teach my teams when i do retrospective with them so first i let people went about the previous sprint to the last two weeks of work so what went wrong and people keep saying everything and then we try to classify into two circles so what out of this we can control and what out of this we cannot control okay this one we cannot control do we want to continue talking about this do we want to continue our pain probably not so let's park this conversation 
for the future time when we are able to control it. If we are not able to control it, so let's just not talk about it at all. Let's focus on what we can control. Well, that's 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 correct. That's correct. And and the other reason was, hey, there's a lot of research, investigation, and papers from our profession focus on the technical aspects of our profession, risk management, portfolio management, I don't know, you name it. Yeah. But a couple of months ago, I had this amazing conversation with with other colleagues. I don't know if you if you know uh, PMO Joe. PMO Joe is the best of the best. Uh, he leads the uh, PMO uh, leader global community. And um, he invited me uh, of be, to be part of the board. And uh, we were having this discussion for, well, the upcoming challenges for the year. And um, suddenly this conversation arise. Hey, we have a lot of knowledge, papers, investigations for many decades ago, focus on the technical aspect, but how does it look the PMO leader? And, 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 and enjoy, uh, Joe asked us, and it was an awkward silence because we were doing some introspection. And the answer was, yes, you're right. How does it look the PMO leader? And from, from that moment, I decided to, well, start thinking about my personal perspective on how does it look this PMO leader. And based on stoic philosophy, for me, a leader does not complain does not focus on things over which he has no control, does not fear the future, nor does he regrets the past because both are valuable. Uh, he values it, he embraces it, and he learns from it, from future, from past. And he doesn't, and, and this is important, this is important. And this is the core of Stoic philosophy. He does not pursue fame because it's ephemeral and irrelevant. A PMO leader or a leader, he is not selfish and, and works for the common good. And uh, I took some specific aspects of the Stoicism in the, in, in the chapter because the, Sto the Stoicism proposed four um, vir cardinal virtues. They named it cardinal virtues. Courage, justice, temperance, and wisdom. And for me, if you can have a framework to make decisions based on those four virtues, you will have a really on a really good understanding on any human interaction conflict. You can be empathic, you can understand, you can be in the shoes of the other of the other people. And that's powerful because empathy goes beyond and above of anger, of, of sadness. Both of good, both are good. Uh, sadness, uh, anger, those are good. But empathy is always on the top. And if you, and if you use this four virtues, you will have well a good landscape to take decision based on human well-being. Thank you for your answer, Lucio. And I want uh, to address a disclaimer for our audience. When we refer to the leader and accidentally say he from time to time, it doesn't mean we focus only on masculine leaders. We are focusing on all genders, all sexes, etc. Sometimes because me and Lucio has English as a second language, it's just easier to refer mm -hmm. as he, but we don't mean just masculine. I want our leaders to understand that. Yes, and just for the record, I sound smarter in Spanish. <laughs> mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, let's move on uh, to the next question. We spoke about uh, making the decision and uh, the leadership uh, role is not about complaints. It's about making some harsh and hard decisions from time to time. And unfortunately, in the modern world, I don't see that many leaders who really follow these principles. So how do you think stoicism can help these leaders to make fast, rational decision in our fast-paced world? Okay, that's a great question. Because for me, instant gratification is not relevant. 
Because if you act case by case, thinking in the short term would be won't be sustainable for the transcendent objectives. So for me, instant gratification, and, and, and don't get me don't get me wrong, we took decisions, um, we improvise a lot, we are creative on a daily basis, but I mean for the transcendent objective of being a leader, being in charge of the well-being of the people. Um, for me, the leader has a lot of patience, perseverance. Um, it's hard to get disturbed because he knows that he or she, he, 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 that that he, the emotions are within our control. But we achieve uh, this through an imperative introspection. We know that if we suffer before necessary, we suffer more than necessary. So for me, it's an ideal opportunity to, re to rescue distincting elements of this Philosoph philosophical approach and use this and use them as a tools to highlight behaviors and characteristics applicable to our professions uh, mainly as a project managers um and to your question i think the short answer will be the stoic leader constantly works on self-control and introspection to achieve an integral life this does not mean that we need to be cold or distant, but instead continually trying to master negative emotions to achieve happiness. It is not an easy task. Uh, and in a world where material things and the tendency to judge others are uh, the order of the day, uh, it's hard. But we want to have in mind that if we focus on virtues, the discipline will come. Thank you. Totally agree with that. And to finish our conversation, let's try to look into the future. And I know it's easier to bring the crystal ball or the tarot cards, and probably we will have more precise answer to our question. But you know, it's interesting to revisit our podcast after like two or five years and see how close or how far we were in our answers related to the future. So let's imagine two to five years. How do you see the uh, leadership role and uh, how do you see the chief project officer might uh, help the organizations? Yeah, that's a great question. I think if we are ambitioning to extend the role, we need to focus on the word extend. Historically speaking, and according to the methodologies, our profession is well limited to some specific practices. But now, and I will use the value ring the methodology from the PMO Global Alliance. The value ring, the, the value ring PMO Global Alliance allows you to extend the service of portfolios, understanding the pain points from your clients, being internal or external, and define the best adaptation of your PMO to the company needs. That being said, um, there's, a, an, uh, there's an important separation between project management and PMO or portfolio management or strategy or chief strategy, if you want to name it, um, or the C-level function uh, ambition by, by, by our profession. Um, there's different layers. The first one is project management. Project management is a well-developed practice that seeks to deliver. Each project is a delivery. Portfolio and PMO, if you are a leader of a PMO, you need to think about being a leader, a business-driven leader. You need to think about the outcome, the business outcome, not only the deliverables, because the mixture of the performance of all the deliverables will, as a consequence, be the business outcome. You need to think about being a revenue generation center instead of a cost center. What I'm trying to say, for some companies still, as of today, PMO is, hey, we can survive without a PMO. It's respectful, it's wrong, but it's respectful. 
Um, but the historical paradigm is, hey, PMO is a cost. Change that mindset and show value on benefit realization on what we can produce. Being a, gener a, a revenue generating center is one of the key messages for the C-level or for ambitioning uh, C-level functions. And the other, the other thing is you need to, well, when... We need to master the project management, the portfolio, the program management uh, layers. But if you are ambitioning a C-level position, meaning strategy, I don't know, you name it. The, 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 choose the name that fits best for you. But, but for me, defining is limitation. So the name could change and can be adapted to uh, all organizations. You need to think like you are the owner of the productive unit, meaning the company. You need to understand different disciplines that historically are not part of our skill set as a project managers. You need to understand finance, PLs, uh, merchant acquisitions, stock market, uh, rising markets, uh, cultural cultural behaviors. There's an additional and huge portfolio of a skill set that you need to master in order to ambition this next step for our profession. Because usually we speak in technical terms, hey, dear CEO, uh, there's a potential risk that can be uh, considered as a high impact with the high level of uh, um, identification. The CEO doesn't speak the technical language of all the expertises that that he or she has on, on, on the company. The language that the CEO speaks is currency, is benefits, is value. And the other thing, and I, and I, I can extend for hours uh, in this matter, but what I always share in the lectures that I provide in webinars on this type of conversation in the consultant work that I do for the, for, for C-level function is, hey, as a PMO, the next iteration, the, ne the next uh, iteration is ambition and C-level. So we need to be a seller. A seller doesn't sell technical terms. A seller sells benefits. And if you if you want to sell benefits, you need to understand how does it look, the, the perfect partnership between you and the C-level functions, between you and the board of directors, between you and the capital investor. I don't know, you name it. But all the knowledge areas that we commonly use on a project management portfolio and program management layer are quite different. Your stakeholders are different. They speak different languages. They ambition different things. So the first thing is you are a seller that talks the same language that those stakeholders are ambitioning for the well-being of the productive unit, meaning the company. Uh, some people tell me, hey Lucho, you are you are you are too selly. Thank you. It's a compliment because you are always complaining, hey, my PMO doesn't grow. Uh, I have been asked to reduce the budget and FTEs. And my answer is, hey, that's your fault. It's all your fault. Don't complain. But if you are if you are if you are not able to build a business case, a consistent business case on how to scale the PMO. You are not structuring the right business case to showcase the potential benefit realization for the company. And if you don't have this narrative in place, it's because you don't understand the pain points and how does it look the perfect partnership for the C-level function as the CEO. So in this case, my friend, you are considered a cost center, not a revenue center. That what I'm, that, that's what I'm trying to say when I, when I say, hey, we need to be sellers. And the sellers, what, what's the preparation work that a seller does every time he will be doing a sales pitch? Understanding pain points. How does it look a perfect partnership? How can I start giving you this perception of value? How can I engage with this perception of value for future interactions? That's the right way to say it. 
I love this and I absolutely agree. I coach many project managers and just a few of them are good sellers. And the maximum what they can uh, provide to the C-suite table is like, I completed the project on time and on budget. But when I start asking, so what is the return on investment of this project? What is the value of this project? What are the benefits of this project? Like, nobody even ever thought about it. Or like they come to the C-suite table with problems and then complain that uh, the leadership uh, was a bit mean to them. And I asked, but uh, what was the conversation about? And then we addressed the problem and that's it. But it's not how the uh, VP and CEO people operate. Okay, they, they operate on the huge scale. You brought me the problem. So what do you want from me? I have a power of solving this problem. So tell me exactly what you want me to do. But you're just bringing me a problem and... What now it's my turn to think about it. You have already you thinking about it. <laughs> Tell me what you want and I will solve it. And yes. And, and it's easy to say, but it's it, it's it's achieve it's achievable because it's human nature. Again, expectations, expectations, neurosemantic, desire states. It's human behavior. So I always uh, through uh, throw this this joke to this conversation. Hey, if you have a hard and complicated stakeholder or C-level up, I don't know. If you have had a hard figure within the organization, the, the, the question that always comes is, Lucho, how can I do if with this problematic C-level function because he hates or she hates the PMO? Okay, let me give you something. Does this C-level has a family? Yes, he has a family, two kids and wife. He is very happy. Oh, okay, okay. So he has personal values. Do we have additional information of he or she as a person? Yes, he loves golf. I don't know. And I will say, hey, how about this approach? This guy will be measured by his performance on an annual basis. And as a consequence, he will be receiving a huge bonus. If you are a promoter for him to get that bonus, he will be a promoter of the PMO. But it's it's, it's hard to say it, but hey, what are the person, beyond the business objective, what are the personal objectives of he or she that allows you to understand how does it look value for him for he or she, how does it look value in his or her mind? You need to ask. You are not a magician. You can't read minds. You need to ask. And to ask, to have that space, to have that valuable conversation, you need to create empathy. And empathy begins with personal objectives. If you have the five minutes conversation, you can start understanding the pain points, the personal values, how you can be a promoter of this huge personal value as a family, because on an annual basis, the family travels to Disneyland. I don't know. But if you can understand that and be a promoter of his or, 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 or her personal benefits, you will have the initial key to have this transcendent conversations. So it's easy to be a seller in some way. And on this note, let's finish today's podcast and give our audience some food to thought and hope to see you in the future podcast and continue collaborating on the book challenging projects and everything else we have planned for the future of PMO. Thank you. Lucia. My pleasure. Aina. Be safe. Take care. Thank you for tuning in to the PMO community podcast for this enlightening discussion with Luis Gardado. A special thanks to our volunteers at the PIMO Community Podcast for making this episode possible. Stay tuned for more captivating insights and interviews in our upcoming episodes. Don't forget to follow us on social media such as LinkedIn, YouTube, Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts to stay updated. If you find this episode valuable, please remember to like and share it. Feel free to reach out to me, Aina Live, on LinkedIn with any questions or requests. And for all the latest updates, make sure to follow us on our social media.